Okay, there we go. Toda raba le meilleur ganim. Many thanks to the organizers. Uh, it's most certainly a pleasure uh, to be here and uh, to be part of uh, the celebration of an effect that uh, has become uh, the namesake of uh, many, many papers and talks, including, of course, uh, the present one. Uh, I will start with uh, just a brief historical introduction, because I'm sure that in uh, this expert audience, uh, an introduction is only needed by way of a warm-up, if at all. Thus, in 1959, the effect was discovered. Uh, then in 1977, Leinas and Mirheim, and in 1981, Golden and collaborators, using a different argument, proved that in two dimensions, uh, particles can possess fractional statistics, that is, intermediate between bosonic and fermionic. The next important step was taken uh, in 1982 by Wilczek, who connected the, uh, the, the two concepts, showing that the former, in fact, implies the latter. Uh, the argument goes like this. Uh, if there is a composite particle consisting of a charge E and a flux phi, then an interchange of two such particles can only yield a phase, because it doesn't change the quantum mechanical state. Uh, the phase we can uh, denote by E to the I pi alpha without any loss of generality. Now, a double interchange yields uh, twice the phase. But on the other hand, it is topologically equivalent to pulling one particle all the way around the other one in a circle. Enter the aron of Bohm effect. This phase is, of course, uh, nothing but the product of uh, charge and uh, flux. And therefore, we have the expression uh, for alpha, which is the same product divided by 2 pi. And uh, the particles do acquire fractional statistics. It is, they turn uh, into what Wilczek called uh, anions. Having said this, the next step is so simple that uh, I am not even sure who said the word first. I have uh, listed here the names that I'm aware of, and I do have to apologize if I have done someone injustice by uh, not mentioning them. Be that as it may, uh, the uh, step is to consider uh, distinguishable uh, particles with different charges and fluxes. Now, of course, a single interchange is not interesting because it changes the quantum state, but a double interchange, uh, that is uh, pulling one particle around the other one, is uh, still interesting because, again, it can, can only yield a phase of alpha A, B, where A and B now number the particle species. Uh, the only slightly non-trivial question here is uh, what, what is the expression for alpha A, B? Which charge times which flux? And it turns out that uh, the center of mass motion in this system only decouples if the charges and fluxes are proportional to each other. And then the expression uh, for alpha AB is simply one charge times the other flux or vice versa. It's symmetric. All this has been simple, but if we pause here for a minute and, and uh, think of the implication, it's really non-trivial. We have just proved that in two dimensions uh, there, there is a notion of statistics of distinguishable <coughs> particles, something that's really unthinkable in uh, conventional quantum mechanics. Having said this, we now have to proceed to formulate a, a quantum mechanical problem which involves a many-body, multi-species uh, wave function. And if we uh, denote a little bit loosely speaking by, by P, the, the uh, anti-clockwise interchange of two particles, then we can still impose this condition here for uh, identical particles. Uh, but for distinguishable particles, as we just discussed, only a double interchange makes sense. So there is the wave function with these condition, conditions. Note that while uh, alpha A, A equals zero corresponds to bosons, alpha equals one to fermions, in this case, for the cross-species statistics parameter, an integer is as good as zero because of periodicity. So for example, alpha equals one mean, means no statistical uh, coupling at all. How does the wave function that satisfies these interchange conditions look? Uh, the expression is here. And uh, you will, of course, rec recognize the familiar uh, Jastrow Laughlin type uh, factor, except alpha is fractional here, not integer. Uh, you see that when we interchange uh, uh, particles j and k, uh, the, the complex uh, difference of their complex coordinates picks up a phase of e to the i pi, hence this picks up the phase, uh, phase of e to the i pi alpha. 
so we have a factor like this for species one, a factor like this for species two, and a cross species factor involving the cross species statistical parameter. And in fact, the only indication that we have two species here is that the symmetric part of the wave function need only be symmetric with respect to interchange within this species and within this species, but not with respect to z uh, interchange with z. Well, uh, this uh, wave function is uh, non-trivial because uh, the uh, coordinates here are really entangled. With a fractional alpha, you cannot expand this as a binomial in terms of single particle wave functions. And as a result, it's only the two-body problem, as originally showed by Vilcek, that is uh, exactly solvable. But even the three-body problem is, uh, can only be solved numerically, although there is a subset of states that can actually be find, found exactly. This holds true for usual single-species anions, and this holds true for uh, multi-species anions alike. Now, if we know at least approximately how to solve an n-body problem, uh, one useful thing that we can do is evaluate the virial coefficients of uh, up to the nth order. This is, of course, a standard uh, textbook statistical mechanics. The virial expansion uh, is an expansion of pressure in terms of density. If we have two species, and for more than two, nothing is uh, principally new, so I, I, I will just consider two. For two species, we have two densities. And I have extracted the dimensional factor in such a way that my virial coefficients are dimensionless. Uh, for uh, completeness sake, I will mention that, of course, this also includes single species virial coefficients where k2 is zero, so that rho2 is not at play. Uh, as I said, the two-body problem is solvable, so the single species uh, two, uh, second virial coefficient is known exactly. This is a uh, well-known formula. Uh, note that uh, it uh, increases with alpha. Indeed, the pressure of a Fermi gas is bigger than the pressure of a Bose gas. Uh, the third and fourth virial coefficients have been calculated approximately, numerically. And here we would like to turn our attention to the um, mixed virial coefficients, which in involve the cross-species statistics parameter. Uh, the expression of, for A11, the coefficient of uh, the second order, is quite trivial. Again, it uh, can be obtained from solving the, the exactly solvable two-body problem. Uh, note again that uh, alpha12 equals zero is the same as alpha12 equals one. In both cases, the mixed uh, virial coefficient vanishes, which really means that there is no statistical coupling between the two species. Uh, the next uh, interesting uh, coefficient is the mixed one of third order, which uh, depends on the intraspecies and interspecies uh, cross-species statistics parameters. Uh, we have uh, calculated it numerically, and I uh, presented here as a plot uh, as, as a function of, of its two arguments. Uh, there is an analytic conjecture uh, concerning uh, what this function might look like uh, that goes way beyond the scope of uh, the pr present talk. And I will just mention again that uh, for alpha 1, 2 equals 0 or 1 alike, this mixed coefficient vanishes. Again, there is no statistical interaction between the species. Uh, having said that, there is an actual n-anion problem which is exactly and uh, completely solvable. Uh, specifically, the spectrum of uh, n-anions uh, on the lowest Landau level uh, of a magnetic field uh, can be found exactly. Well, of course, for the purists among us, uh, this is not a, a complete solution of a problem. This is on, only a subset of, uh, of the states. Uh, but uh, practically speaking, it is interesting because if the uh, magnetic field is strong, then it is indeed only the lowest Landau level that contributes to the partition function. So this subset of, of the spectrum is actually interesting. Well, this subset has been found uh, for, um, for single species anions, and it can also be found for uh, multi-species anions. As it turns out, uh, the statistical uh, interaction between the particles of the same or different species is uh, a little bit loosely speaking a pairwise effect. Because from this expression here, 
uh, you can see that the, the effect, the change in the energy that statistics brings about is the number of pairs of particle of species one times the corresponding statistical parameter plus the same for species two plus the number of cross species pair pairs times the cross species statistics parameter. Well, uh, since we know the exact uh, solution for any n here, we don't even need to resort to the virial expansion because we can write down uh, the exact uh, equation of uh, state. Uh, it is given by uh, this formula expressed in terms of the uh, Landau level density. Uh, and uh, some uh, comments uh, concerning this equation are that first, if all the alphas are zero, if there is no statistical interaction at all, and if further a rho is very small, then you expand the logarithm and it becomes the uh, ideal gas equation of state. When you sort of switch off statistics, when, when uh, alpha begins to grow, uh, the pressure uh, grows, which is again kind of natural. There is a statistical repulsion as compared to bosons, so the pressure grows. It is actually a little more subtle than that. Uh, the, the, there are some subtleties con concerning this uh, equation, but there is no way I can discuss them within the time allotted. Uh, I will conclude my talk then uh, by uh, briefly uh, illustrating two results that have to do with a particular case of multi-species anions, namely uh, the problems involving anions and static iron of bomb magnetic fluxes. Uh, the fluxes are, of course, just your multi-species anions with infinite mass, which is why they are static. Uh, we sometimes we call these magnetic impurities. The uh, two-body problem is, again, trivial. And uh, of the three-body problems, there are two. One particle plus two fluxes, or two particles plus one flux. Uh, for one particle and two fluxes, uh, we have studied the, the dependence of... Uh, uh, the energy, eigenstate energies uh, on the values of the two fluxes uh, with the harmonic potential as a regulator to, 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 to have a, a discrete spectrum. And presented here is a plot of the ground state as a function of these uh, two uh, parameters. Again, note that alpha equals one is the same as alpha equals zero uh, the, the, when the flux is the uh, multiple of, uh, of the flux quantum. And uh, the other three-body problem is two particles plus one flux. There's uh, two standard anions with statistics alpha in a harmonic potential with a uh, flux gamma placed uh, at the origin. Here, everything will depend on alpha and gamma. Again, we have studied the ground state, and it turns out that there are two competing states. The energy of one of them is known exactly. Of the other one, there is only an analytic conjecture because the energy has only been calculated numerically. So there is a somewhat non-trivial structure of uh, the ground state here, and uh, there is a level crossing uh, where, where the uh, energies of these two states meet. Well, I have uh, played on the flag, but I have definitely stopped short of forfeiting the game. Thank you very much. The rule of thumb is uh, whatever can be done for single species anions uh, can be done for multi-species anions in general. And two-body problems are simple anyway, so uh, my educated guess would be yes, you could do that. <laughs>